So that, in essence, is how we create an ext class. If we want to actually instantiate that class, this is what it would look like. I would create a variable. In this case, I would name it address and do an ext.create. You'll notice that the way we define class is through ext.define. Creation is through ext.create. Pretty simple to remember. The first parameter that I pass to ext.create is the name of the class that I want to create. The second parameter is the configuration options. This allows me to set up potentially defaults of my class and only specify the ones that I really need to when it comes to instantiation. Uh, let's say my default value in my class was of city of um, Overland Park. When I actually want to instantiate it, if I didn't specify city, ext would be able to say, oh, you know, I know this default, the instance didn't have this default, I'll just put it all together. Um, but if I specified it as Lenexa instead of Overland Park, ext knows to take the version that the instance has versus the version that the original object prototype has. So if we just want to specify an address, uh, we can do the keyhole address. So the street is 9800 oh, and I'm just doing this off memory so it may be completely wrong. City, I believe we're in Lenexa. State, that's Kansas, I remember that one. Uh, zip code, no idea, I'll just put in a number because I like that number. What this has done after this line is executed, as you can probably guess, is created a new instance of this class with all these member variables. When I want to actually access them, if I wanted to do an alert, I could use address.getStreet, which would output, as you can probably guess, the street that I put up above. If I wanted to change it, it would be address.setStreet. And I can just do which is an old apartment that I used to have. Um, so it does the config option that we can specify in our class definition. It does allow us to do these getters and setters that are automatically generated based off of the name that I give it. We can, if we wanted to, set up some overrides. So if I wanted to do set address and I wanted a state zip, I can do this dot set state, this dot set zip, and make use of that. Um, it wasn't even necessary really for us to use the config. I just showed it in this example because it does give you the power of automatically generating those getters and setters. Um, so let's undo all of our changes and continue to walk through what this class looks like. So you'll notice down here that I have another class defined. The way that is recommended to set things up in ext is that each class has its own file. Um, this is the same convention that a lot of other programming languages like Java use. If we wanted to, in which I will in later examples, set this up, when one class, let's say my contact class, requires my address class, all I have to do is tell it, oh, these are all the classes that I need, and it'll load in all the different files. EXT does have a really good dependency management feature inside of it, and this is really where it comes into play. So there are a couple different things that are different about this class than the previous one. You'll notice that it has an alias. I may not ever want to refer to my classes with their full names. Um, for whatever reason, if I just want to refer to it as contact instead of prime.contact, I can just set that up through the alias. The constructor, rather than relying on the config option, just immediately sets this dot name as the name. It has statics, so I can set up methods that are completely independent of the instance that I have. Address as a mixin, um, mixins are a little bit more advanced topics, so we won't cover that here. But if you did want to use a mixin, this is what it would look like. 